Welcome. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. We're located right in the heart of downtown Gulfport, and we seek to make disciples of Jesus Christ by centering our lives around loving God and neighbor. Our core values are to trust God, honor everyone, and to reach out in service. We know that there are many ways that you could be connecting with us today. Maybe you're joining us through our televised broadcast or online through our website or Facebook. However you're joining us, we want to invite you to fill out the digital hay card, share a message for the pastors and staff of our church, or you may want to include a special prayer concern. Every single week, we invite you to give. Give to the mission and ministries of our congregation. And there are many ways you can do that. You'll see them listed on the screen. And we thank you so much for every gift given to our congregation. We are in the middle of a series called The Elephant in the Room, and that elephant is grief. We're all experiencing on some level, some kind of pain and loss. And last week, I talked about how important it is to feel your feelings to grow in God's grace. This week, Tracy Capaletti is going to talk about how grief cannot be rushed. It has its own timetable. We want to invite you to clear away any distractions. You know, to receive the truth of God, we have to be ready and willing. So, is your heart and mind? Are you warm and kind? Are you mellow? Are you receptive? What is the Holy Spirit wanting to reveal to you and to me this day? Our worship now begins. God is leading us out of our wilderness. God will provide a safe haven for us. Place your trust in God's loving kindness. God has heard our cries and offers us hope. Thanks be to God who brings us to life. Thanks be to God who nurtures and sustains us. Amen. someone they love long before it was their time you feel like the days you had were not enough when you said goodbye and to all of the people with burdens and pain keeping you back from your life you believe there is nothing and there is no one who could make it right. There is hope for the helpless, rest for the weary, love for the broken heart. There is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing. He'll reach you wherever you are. Cry out to Jesus, cry out to Jesus. For the marriage that's struggling just to hang on, they've lost all their faith in love, and they've done all they can to make it right again still it's not enough for the ones who can't break the addiction and chains you try to give up but you come back again just remember that you're not alone in your shame and your suffering there is hope for the helpless Rest for the weary, love for the broken heart. There is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing. He'll save you wherever you are. Cry out to Jesus. When you're lonely and it feels like the whole world is falling on you, 
just reach out, you just cry out to Jesus, cry out to Jesus. the widow who suffers from being alone, wiping the tears from her eyes, for the children around the world without a home, say a prayer tonight. There is rest for the weary, hope for the hopeless, love for the broken heart. There is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing. He'll reach you wherever you are. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. To Jesus, today I'm reading from Ecclesiastes chapter three, verses one through eight. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, any time for peace. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hi and welcome. I am so glad to be with you again today. Today we're going to continue our series called The Elephant in the Room. And it's an English idiom that just means that there's something that everybody knows, everybody's thinking about, but yet nobody wants to address it. It doesn't slip my mind that today is August 29th. It's the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. And it's the time when you as a community were plunged into grief. And yet today, 16 years later, we're in yet another season of grief. And the elephant in the room is just that. It's grief. So will you pray with me today? O oh, gracious and loving God, creator of all things that are good, be with us in our grief when it is our time to grieve. And when it is our time to rejoice, be with us then as well. And when we are weary, give us the strength in our weakness. O oh, God, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Grief. It's fair to say that we've all experienced some sort of grief in the last 18 months as COVID has circled the globe in what feels like a carousel that we cannot get off. We've been through it all. And as Claire said last week, that our lives today look very different than the lives we lived in March of 2020. We've all experienced some sort of grief, some sort of loss, loss of jobs, loss of financial security, 
loss of routine, loss of control, and some of us have even lost loved ones. Nothing we could have done could have prepared us for the grief and loss that we were about to endure and that we felt in our personal lives, in our communities, and as a global community as a whole. We're all grieving. And in the past 18 months, some of us have been struck with grief more so than others. I think about the healthcare workers who have lost who have worked countless hours, giving precious time to work instead of their families. And I think of the educators who have had to learn new ways to teach, and of the children who are in a constant state of change in their learning environments. And then there are those of us who have been profoundly touched and affected by grief. Those of us who have lost beloved loved ones, friends, and family members. I fall into that last category. In October of 2020, I lost my dad to COVID. It was sudden, it was quick, and in a flash, my life changed forever. Like many of you, I am pretty type A. I'm a planner, I'm strategic, and as a military spouse, I have to be to be able to handle the constant change that we endure. I have multiple plans for multiple situations, a plan A, a B, and sometimes even a plan C, but there was no plan for a pandemic and there was definitely no plan for it to affect my family so profoundly. But it happened. So I did what I only know to do. I made a plan. I made a plan for my grief. And I made a plan for my grief because I knew that I had a tight timeline for it. You see, in three months, I knew my husband was deploying for a six-month overseas deployment. I knew that I had three months to feel all of my feelings, to process it all, so that I could get back to the grueling pace of working, going to school, and caring for our two kids as a single parent while he was away. I had three months to feel my feelings, and then I could stuff them back down so that I could distract myself with work, school, and kids. That elephant in the room, it was just going to have to stay in that dark corner for now. There was no time for it. Our scripture today comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. And what I find interesting about this book is that it's written by King Solomon, a man who has everything that anyone could ever want. But yet, the majority of the book is him complaining about the futility of life. And in his rant about the meaningless of everything that life has to offer, he offers us this brief passage about the seasons of life and how they play a part in our life. There's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to laugh and a time to mourn, a time to weep and a time to dance. Notice what Solomon doesn't say here. He doesn't say a time to compartmentalize all of your feelings so that you can look past this bad stuff and only on to the good. Instead, he acknowledges the seasons, the way they ebb and flow through life in times of trials and in times of blessings. He doesn't set time parameters around uncomfortable emotions, urging us to look past and to the good. He simply acknowledges the time and place that they have in our life. And if there's one thing I have learned in the past 10 months since my dad passed is that no amount of planning can get you through grief. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I said, if I can just get through this challenge, everything will be okay. And then lo and behold, I get through that challenge, but yet the fog of grief still lingers. Grief doesn't care about your timeline, and there's no rushing it to fit into the limitations and constraints that you have set for it. There is a distinct lack of control 
with grief. It feels as if we've been plunged into a world of chaos and uncertainty. I once had a friend explain grief to me like this. She says it's like standing barefoot on the shoreline. That sometimes your feet feel steady on the sand beneath them, but sometimes you feel the sand shifting underneath your feet. Sometimes there are gentle waves crashing upon you, but other times there are large waves crashing and knocking you off of your feet completely. You see, sometimes it's pulling us in, and other times it's pushing us away. There are waves of anger and denial, waves of bargaining and depression, and sometimes just a gentle wave of acceptance. And then there are times where multiple types of waves hit us at one time, crushing us. The chaos of the sea mirrors the chaos of our lives. But God is with us in the chaos. Even when we can't see which way is up, much less which way is forward. I can't help but think of Job and his times of trials and tribulations. This is a man that has been through it all. He's faced natural disaster, the loss of his ten children, a wife that left him, and physical illness on top of that. This man can't catch a break. And yet he stands steady in his faithfulness through it all. Yes, he laments, he doubts, he is angry with God, and he has every right to be. But he never questions God's presence. Perhaps he repeated those famous words that Moses said to Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Have no fear. Because the Lord your God goes with you, he will not fail you. He will not forsake you. God was with Job in his chaos and God is with us in ours as well. Our on-demand culture rarely gives us the time to mourn, much less the permission to mourn. So it fascinates me to study other cultures who do have such strong mourning rituals. I'm fascinated by the Jewish custom of Shiva. You see, Shiva allows seven days after the burial for people who have lost something to mourn profoundly, to talk about their losses, to accept comfort from others. And then after seven days, they're encouraged to gently get back to the routine of life. And as life begins to get into a new routine though, after we've, at, when the chaos and trauma have settled, we begin to gain some normalcy again. But even then, we still have that hole of something missing. Welcome to the confusing in-between. During this time, it can feel as if everyone else has moved on, but yet you are struggling just to exist. We say things like, I'm fine, I'm getting through it, I'm functioning. But the reality is there is a hole inside of you that is sorely felt and can't be filled. Our outside often doesn't match the way our insides feel, and it's just so hard to process. People begin to say things like, it's been long enough, you should be over it. And you try to hide it, but we're broken inside. And there's no quick solution to this time period. It takes patience and perseverance. It cannot be rushed. And this is where it's so tempting to take control of anything and everything just to feel like you have control over something. You know, in the Bible there's so many examples of this. I think of Abraham and his time of confusing in between where God has promised him an heir and yet he remains childless. So he puts Sarah to the side and he has Ishmael with Hagar. It makes me think, how many times have we created Ishmaels in our time of confusing in between? The temptation to do is great, 
But the call of grief is to wait, to wait as the waves of grief passes, as for the fog to lift so that we can once again live in the perfect joy only found in Christ. I don't know what waiting looks like for you, but for me, it looks like to slow down, to let go of control. And here's the hard one for me, to allow others to help, to stop holding myself accountable to a rigid plan. It preaches easier than it lives, and I'm working on it. Our journey through grief has no timetable. It's not linear, and it provides twists and turns at every opportunity as we seek to reach the other side of grief. The storm has settled, but the hole is still there. But slowly and surely, we get glimpses of what the other side of grief looks like. We begin to reorganize our relationships, ourselves, and our routines as we begin to start a new normal despite the losses that we've endured. The reality is time does not heal grief. If time were to heal grief, it would diminish the importance of our love for whatever it is we've lost. Henry Nouwen is even so bold to say that time deepens grief. You see, the more we love, the more it hurts. I like this image of grief. And rather than grief getting smaller as time goes on, our lives just get bigger. You see, it never goes away. Because if grief went away, it would mean that our love goes away. And that's just not how it works. We won't heal from grief. But we do recover. And as we recover, the sharp pain of grief diminishes. And as the sharp pain of grief dulls, we start to realize that grief's hold on us is not permanent. It's just a season that we'll eventually get through and it will bloom into another season. And we can remember that Jesus tells us, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. It's hard to think of blessings in such a time of pain and grief. Julie Yarborough explains it like this. She says, grief endows us with heightened compassion, empowered humanity, and a greater identity with passions of life and of love and of death. Our experience with grief, our ability to move through grief, is what ultimately gives us the compassion we need to help others do the same. You see, it's grace that mends our brokenness. It fills our emptiness. And the beautiful thing about grace is that the same grace that mends our brokenness is the same grace that we can share to help others mend their as well, mend theirs as well. Grief is hard and it's scary and confronting it takes guts and we have to allow grace to lead us through it. But when we can finally step into the light of the other side of grief, we can see that it has grown us in our spiritual maturity. It has made us more emotionally agile and it has deepened our trust in the God that continues to stick with us through it. We can't plan grief. We can't constrain it to the limit limitations of our own will and to the schedules that we put it in. But we can trust that God will be there with us in the chaos of grief. When everything begins falling apart and that confusing in between, we can trust that God is with us there as well. And we can trust that God is there on the other side of grief, reminding us of God's unrelenting love for us so that we can share it with others. So give yourself a break. Allow yourself time to wait, to sit with it, and to be with your grief. 
Don't try to control it and try to make friends with your elephant and I'm going to try to do the same thing. Stop trying to put it into the corner of the room. Acknowledge it because it's only around for a season. And during that time, lean in to your community and relax into the arms of the eternal comforter. Amen. Merciful God, we, we know that healing takes time and that nothing sacred happens in a hurry. And yet we resist. We literally run away from pain and loss. We don't want to grieve to grow in your grace. And so we ask you to give us the courage. Give us the courage to embrace both our sorrows and our joys, the highs and lows of life, births and deaths, new and old. We ask you to help us when we sing that song, to mean it when we say it. Whatever my lot, whatever my lot, it is well. It is well with my soul. And now we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is born, where grace is found, is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need So teach my song to rise to you When temptation comes my way And when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay And when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. I want the
defense and righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, how God I need you. As always, we're so grateful that you joined us for worship today. We hope you'll join us again next week for 10 a.m. worship live stream. We're going to continue this series. Actually, we're going to wrap it up. This series called The Elephant in the Room. We're going to talk about the importance of showing up for one another in times of pain and loss. If you want to know more about our church, check out our website and receive these words of blessing and benediction. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.